Chicago, Illinois, where today the Saints and the Bears meet up. The wind is gusting in off Lake Michigan. It could be very much of a factor in this game. Hello, everyone. I'm Don Crickey, joined by the former Jet All Pro running back, Emerson Boozer. Emerson, we have a very gusting wind coming in off Lake Michigan. Do you think that could dictate a running game? Not exactly. I think with the wind, with either club offensively, they'll throw the ball a lot. But when they turn it around, oppose that win, they must keep the ball on the ground because you don't want to see one of your passes stop in midair. Jack Party, the coach of the Chicago Bears, thinks this is a very important football game. He said if the Bears really do have a good team like he thinks they have, they should show it today against a team like New Orleans. And the Saints need a win as bad as they've ever needed one right now. They have been disappointing with their offensive unit. They need a lot of help. Right now, the Saints have it teed up. They'll kick it off to lead away as the Chicago Bears are in receiving formation. The rookie from Southern California, who is a quarterback there, Vince Evans, is back deep for the Bears to look for the kickoff as Richie Zarro hits it well. He knocks it with the wind behind him, two yards deep in the end zone. And here comes Vince Evans, a big running back, former quarterback, gets it out across the 25. The hard hit is put on him. Down on the play was a two-lane linebacker, Rick Kingray. And so the Bears go on offense first and ten. Looking at the Chicago Bear offensive alignment, Bob Avellini, number seven, is their quarterback. His setbacks are Walter Payton and Roland Harper. The tight end is 88, Greg Latta. James Scott and Bo Rather are flanked to either side as the wide. Now they're both deployed to the right as they go pitch back to Walter Payton. And Payton is cut down at about the 29-yard line. Alex Price came up to make the hit for New Orleans, number 75. Right now, the Bears are coming against the wind. Surprisingly, they want the second and fourth quarter. Having that win will give them an added advantage going into the halftime and try to win it at the conclusion of the game if they have to pass the football. The Saints and the Bears met in the preseason. New Orleans won here 20 to 14 in August. It is now second down and eight. Bull Harper, Roland Harper looks to run, and the Saints cut down the run as New Orleans comes across, making a hit at the 33-yard line with the strong safety Chuck Chris, number 44. Harper playing alongside an all-pro like the great Walter Payton sometimes does not get the press he deserves, but this is a great football player. In his first two seasons at Chicago, he's averaged 4.4 yards a carry. Good receiver, blocks. He's responsible for a lot of Peyton's yards. He just showed me, uh, Walter Payton, matter of fact, just showed me something there, Don. He opened up a nice hole in blocking on, on one of the state linebackers, and that's a tough play to move out. Payton is a blocker. He'll knock down a linebacker. He's one of the better blocking backs in the league. they got two good blockers here at Chicago. Here comes Payton. And Walter Payton gets very near to a first down who had advanced the ball out to about the 37-yard line. Merlo. The left side linebacker from Stanford, number 57, came across and hit him. We'll see where they spot the ball. It looks like it might be a little bit short, Emerson. It looks as though they, they do have a good shot. They might bring the, uh, the chains out for a measurement. There's one thing I'd like to bring out here, Don. The field is a little bit damp, and when the field is damp as it is, ball carriers and quarterbacks tend to get a little bit careless with the football. And when there's moisture on the, on the ball, not coming from upstairs but on the ground, you tend to lose grip on the football. So you've got to be very careful with the wind mixed with a little dampness on the ground. We had gusting rain and wind here in Chicago. They're now field pretty much bathed in sunlight. As here is the punt. Bob Parsons hits it very well. The leading punter in the NFC. And back making a fair catch and then losing the football is a rookie, Rich Mowdy, who played last year for Penn State. And there is also a penalty marker down where the Saints were setting up the return. So New Orleans gets the ball for the first time with 12.34 left to play in the first quarter. No score on the board. The Saints going with Archie Manning at quarterback. Muncie and Galbraith will be his running backs as we wait now for the official ruling on the penalty marker. It looks like it's going to be a clip call and it'll set the Saints back. Illegal use of hands against New Orleans. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited. Illegal use of hands. Number 24, receiver. First down. 
Right away, Don, the New Orleans Saints special team has put their offensive unit in a bit of a hole. You want to try to start the start your offensive unit at the 20 yard line, but they are minus 10 at this point. New Orleans had no running game at all, but they're looking for one right now. Straight T backfield, a power backfield, and Galbraith, a big second year back out of Missouri, hits straight ahead out across the 10 yard line, advances the ball close to the 13 yard line. Don Reeves, the middle linebacker for Chicago, is a guy that knocked him down. Last week, as you see the New Orleans offensive backfield, the Saints would have only had eight yards rushing had not a broken pass play resulted in a 31-yard run for a touchdown by halfback Chuck Muncie. He was rolling out to throw the ball, saw an opening, and ran for a touchdown. But from scrimmage on straight running plays, the Saints had but eight yards. They got four in their first crack. Now, Muncie hits out across the 15-yard line, gets the ball close to the 16. Ron Reidolch, number 76, and veteran Doug Buffon were on the stop for Chicago. Knowing Coach Hank Schramm over the years and having played against many of his clubs, I'm sure at this point he wants to get both of those great running backs, potentially great running backs, into the action today because it does two things. Number one, keep the ball away from the Bear offense and Walter Payton if you can control it on the ground. So I'm not surprised at this point that they've run the ball twice already. Billy Newsom, an ex-Saint, is at right defensive end for Chicago. Archie Manning on third and three pitches back. Muncie runs and a big hit is put on him by the middle linebacker Don Reeves. Reeves, the middle linebacker, makes the big hit for the Chicago Bears in a third down play. And now New Orleans will have to punt the ball back to Chicago. The Saints punting from deep in their own area of the field. They will have the wind advantage here in the first quarter. And their punter Blanchard has done an excellent job this year. He's right behind Parsons last week against Detroit. Tom Blanchard averaged over 50 yards for eight punts, hit one of 66 yards. And as you see, he'll be drilling it from inside his five-yard line. Steve Schubert is back deep now for the Bears. Blanchard hits it downfield. The wind takes it back, and Schubert positioned perfectly at the 33, starts up field with room to go. Schubert across midfield, and Schubert is cut down at the 45-yard line of New Orleans. Don, that was the kind of punt that you really don't want to see your punting team make it was not a high kick the wind carried it very well got downfield in a hurry so you were able to get a return that ball has to be put in the air hope to get as much height as you possibly possibly can a 53 yard punt but Schubert got it back and there's also a penalty marker down on the field Greg Boykin a rookie from Northwestern was down on special teams to make the hit for New Orleans illegal formation New Orleans not enough men on the line of scrimmage Decline, first time. Those are the kind of mistakes that you don't want to see any club makes. Here, a club that has to get back into action, come up and not get enough men on the line. The little things like that will beat you, Don. Bob Pollard, Alex Price, Derlin Moore across the defensive front. The last groom. Here is the pitch and turning in. Not holding on to the football was Bo Rather. As Rather turned in, the ball was there. I think he might have heard those defensive backs coming up to put the pop on him. So it'll be second down and 10 now for Chicago, just inside the 45-yard line of New Orleans. I think you were exactly right, Don. He, he, he leaped in the air to ward off the defender, tried to cover the football. The ball hit his hands, just could not hold on to it. The Chicago Bears have made some changes in their offensive line. They have a very highly regarded rookie from California, Ted Albrecht, starting for Jeff Seavey at the left tackle. Second down and 10 for Avellini and the Bears. Pitch back to Payton. Got a man out in front of him, and Walter Payton is inside the 40 and turns it all the way down to the 37-yard line. Got close to eight. Right now, this is a pretty uh, open offensive ball game. They're using the kind of play, a little, a little 28 or 29, you might call it here, pitch out. But this kind of play worries me on a day where the ball has a little bit of moisture and the wind. The ball could get away from you, but... Sure-handed Mr. Payton picks up about 80 yards and tries to ram as he works his way upfield. Big Dennis Lick was out in front of him, blocking out on the cornerback over there, Craig Cassidy. So now it's going to be third down and two for the Bears. The ball spotted just outside the 36-yard line of New Orleans. We're in the first quarter, and there's no score. Double tight end set. They go to Roland Harper, and he looks like he's got what he needed. Had to get two. He got all of that as he drives down close to the 33-yard line. Middle of the Saints defensive line on a stop. Alex Price and Derlin Moore, but it's a first down for Chicago. Strategy starts to build right now. The Bears know they have a good running attack. The Saints think they have one because they have two great young running backs. 
But right now, neither club has opted to throw the ball that much. The one ball that Avellini put in the air was right on the numbers. But Radder couldn't hold on. Now Avellini on first down looking to put it up again. He's got time. Now the big rush comes and Avellini throws and gets the man. It's Walter Payton. And Payton is inside the 10. It's going to be touched down Chicago. Avellini, who had a scramble, got it off on the run. He looked for an open man and he got the right one. And Walter Payton who does it on his own if you give him room. This is what you'd like to do against a club like New Orleans. It's been reported that they're a little bit weak in the secondary if there's such a thing. But to give Mr. Payton to any linebacker, this is what can happen. Gets a block, finds a little room on the sideline, and he starts to step out. It's all over. Six corner. So now Bob Thomas will try the point after. And so we have nine minutes left to play in the first quarter here at Chicago, and the Bears have ripped up the big gainer, and they're in the lead, seven to nothing. We have assembled here a most congenial group, brought together by the love for a truly great beer. Right, group? Right. It's light beer from Miller. Right, group? Right. They think the best thing about it is it's less filling. It has a third less calories than a regular beer. Right, group? Right. Wrong. The best thing about it, it tastes great. No, honey, it's less filling. That's horrible. That's me. Hey, take it from me. It tastes great. Who are you? You won't think this fight is no joke when you come to and your nose is broke. No wonder you don't get no respect. I tell you, I don't deserve no respect. You still don't know nothing about beer. I thought I threw you out of this bar last year. I feel very strongly both ways. I never argue. Hi, Mickey. Hi, doll. What's a nice guy like you doing in a fight like this? Waiting for you, doll. <laughs> hey, look at that. For us. I still don't know why they wanted me to do this commercial. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Well, after the Bears got the ball in good field position following Schubert's punt return, it didn't take them long to take it in. As Avellini on a scramble hits Walter Payton, who went down the far sideline 33 yards for a touchdown. Subsequent extra point good by Thomas. It's now 7-0 game Bears. Thomas kicks off into the win. You can see that ball held up. Saints will get a return on this. Coming up with the ball is Rich Mowdy. And he is up and is across the 25-yard line. Nicely done by Len Walterscheid. Number 23, who is down on special teams. Fensick was also on the play for Chicago. And so the Saints come back out on offense, trailing in the game 7-0, with 8.52 to play in the first quarter. There was one thing wrong with that uh, kickoff return. The return had got too close to his wedge. You cannot permit yourself to get right on the backs of your blockers because one man can cut down an, an entire blocking core, and you've had it which is exactly what happened. Mowdy is now out wide to the left. There's one wide receiver. Don Herman is the other. Handoff goes to Galbraith, and he is cut down for just about no gain. Osborne, the big defensive tackle that Louisiana football fans remember from Southern University in Baton Rouge, knocked him down at about the 27-yard line. The Saints having difficulty getting that running game going, and when they've been forced to throw, Manning has had problems. He has been sacked more than any quarterback in the NFL through the first two weeks of play 13 times. I often wonder, when you have two great running backs like uh, Galbraith and Muncie, then have a fine quarterback in Archie Manning, where do you place your priorities? You want to get balanced both run block and pass block, but thus far they do not have it. Now they bring a line of defensive back up tight for Chicago to force the run, and still Muncie turns the corner, but we might have a motion penalty against the Saints. As the marker went down to the line of scrimmage, Wayman Bryant, the big outside linebacker, knocked down Chuck Muncie, but this play is going to come back. If there's a weakness for the Bears, I think it has to be in their linebacking core and possibly in the secondary. Uh, but thus far, the front four for the Bears have played well. They need a little more pass rush. They hope that they can get to Archie Manning if he decides to throw the football a lot. And on the other side, Manning has to be aware of the number of Bill times he hit. Two men moving. Second down. Saints having a little problem misfiring off the scrimmage play, and so now it's going to bring up a second down and 14 yards to go. Second and 15. The 
Bears have not got the pass rush they'd like. Now they go to Muncie on a draw and a big back from California. Runs the ball out across the 25-yard line. Got it out to about the 27. It'll bring up third down and nine. Gary Fensick knocked him down along with Jerry Myers, 74. This is the middle draw where the halfbacks merely sets up, finds his way inside, gets a good block here, just did not get enough maneuvering room to get the necessary yardage for the first time. Found a very fine piece of running by Chuck Muncie. Buffon, Reeves, and Bryant back the line for Chicago. Watch the middle, Chicago! Newsom and Myers the defensive end. Osborne is one defensive tackle. Rydulch is the other. It is now third and nine. They go to the run, and here comes Galbraith. Tony Galbraith gets ahead, and he's got a first down for New Orleans. And to get the ball out across the 35, out across the 36. He did that, and then was driven back by a former St. Terry Schmidt. The Bears have not been pleased with their pass coverage. Consequently, they have set the strong safety Craig Clemens on the bench this week. And they have three cornerbacks actually playing. One of them is now the strong safety. Terry Schmidt, normally a cornerback. Alan Ellis is at one corner. Virgil Live is at the other. Fensick and Schmidt, the deep backs for Chicago. First and 10 New Orleans in the St. 37. The handoff straight ahead carry as the Saints try to gut it out. We might have a late hit there, M.O., by Chicago. I think we do. Somebody came out rather late. There. I think it, yeah, Terry Schmidt came up. I don't think he really had to put that blow because uh, the running back had gone down. Uh, he wanted to add a little security to it and made a big mistake. Now Chuck Muncie goes out of the game and Mike Strawn, number 33, comes in. Billy Newsom might have been in a late hit. Gordon McCarter, the referee, is going to tell us just what happened here. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 47. First down. So it turned out, after all, to be number 47, Mike Spivey, a rookie from Colorado. Come in to play deep. First and 10 now, the major penalty advancing the ball inside the Chicago 45 yard line. The Saints try to go to the run again this time. Rolladal shuts it right down. We have 6.35 to play in the first quarter here at Chicago. Don Crickey with Emerson Boozer. The Chicago Bears in their second possession move 44 yards very quickly. The last 33 on a pass from Avellini to Peyton as Jack Pardee. The Bears coach looks on from the sideline. Pardee said of last week's Cardinal game, they didn't play well enough to beat us, but the final numbers refute that. It was 16-13. On second and nine, the Bears again shut down the New Orleans run very quickly. They tried to go with a quick trap block up the middle, but Don Reeves filled very nicely the middle linebacker for the Bears, and it's going to be third down and nine. Reeves read that one very well. He, he was keying off of the left guard, and the left guard folded over to move to his left. That tells the middle linebacker it's time to step into the gap because something is about to happen. Muncie comes back into the Saints' offensive backfield now. 7-0 Chicago in the first quarter. 5.40 to play in it. Out wide to the right is Herman. Here's a pitch back to Chuck Muncie. And Muncie is knocked out of bounds. Coming across was Alan Ellis, the left side cornerback number 48 from UCLA. Now in his fifth year, the defensive backfield coach of the Bears, Ross Feetner, says that he thinks Ellis right now is Pro Bowl caliber cornerback. He said he does everything right. A couple of years ago, Ellis had had a lot of trouble at uh, the cornerback slot. Merely, I think they, uh, they, they attribute that to his quick feet. He had trouble maintaining his balance, but for some reason last year he got on track and uh, has become a very stern foe in that secondary for the Bears. Schubert is again back deep now with men on either flank. Brian Bashnagel is also back along with Walter Scheid as Blanchard will punt now for New Orleans. Gets time and drills it deep. Should carry into the end zone for a touchback, and the Chicago Bears will take it out on their 21st and 10. Coming, the new Ford Fairmont. A new car designed for today and the years ahead. Fairmont's mileage ratings are the same as a little VW Rabbit when both are equipped with automatic transmission. Yet Fairmont has 90% of the head, leg, and shoulder room of most large cars and fine all-around visibility. 
This kind of room is combined with the highest mileage rating in its class. Test drive Fairmont October 7th. Fairmont, the newest better idea from Ford. Want to cut your fuel bills? Whether your house is new or old, put insulation everywhere it can save you money. Your attic, you need a 6 to 12 inch blanket of pink Owens Corning fiberglass. Walls, full insulation. Unheated crawl space, insulate below the floor. Live where it's cold, insulate basement walls. See your Owens Corning fiberglass supplier to learn all about insulation. Insulation is cheaper than oil. Well, up at Pontiac, Michigan, the Detroit Lions out in front of Philadelphia, 10 to 7. Detroit just got a field goal from Mickemeyer to put them in front if the game was tied. And the Packers, after moving out in front, 7 0 over the Vikings, now have that game tied up as Tarkin has just thrown to White, 16 yards for a touchdown. Bob Avellini guns it out quickly in the flat, isolating the wide receiver against the cornerback. A penalty marker goes down, is moving up the field with a football was James Scott. They tried there. They're working on Cassidy, the young cornerback over there out of Ohio State who's been moved to cornerback because of the injury to Ernie Jackson, who suffered a dislocated elbow against the Lions. And Cassidy making his first start. So they're going to go to work on number 23. Here's a guy that you don't want to get a, give him a step because James Scott can really fly. Sometimes it looks as though he has rollers or wings on his feet because he can really stretch it out. The, that's the kind of play you want to get to a fleet-footed receiver. A little quick pop. You got the defensive back backing off. Give him a little maneuvering room, and he's gone. That big Dennis Lick, number 70, was out in front of the play again. He's played a lot of football here at Soldier Field. Led St. Rita High School in Chicago to two Chicago Prep High School championships. Then went on to Wisconsin. Offensive pass interference. Number 80 is the accepted penalty. The illegal use of hands by the offense was declined. First down. Bo Rather had the problem. So now the ball is set back to the 10 yard line. It's going to be first down and 20 for Chicago. Avellini goes in the draw to Harper. He's caught by Derlin Moore and knocked down. Number 74, Derlin Moore makes the tackle for New Orleans. So now it's going to bring up second down. The pickup was less than two yards. It'll be second and 19 for the Chicago Bears. We have five minutes left to play in the first quarter. The Bears are leading seven to nothing. Scored in their second possession on a 33-yard touchdown pass play. Avellini to Walter Payton is actually a broken play. Avellini was scrambling, found Payton along the far sideline. He took it the distance. Avellini on a counter coming across as Walter Payton hits out to the 15 yard line and is knocked down there. Fetterspiel, who made 20 tackles last week against the Lions, the New Orleans middle linebacker, made the stop. Payton, after the 160 yard game against Detroit his first week, was held at 36 yards and 11 carries last week against St. Louis. Don, right here is a point where if, if a defensive unit is going to stand up and give uh, the overall club a little strength, you have to try to take any offensive unit, especially this bear unit, and keep them down in that territory. Now is the time to stand up and be tough. Third down and 15 for Chicago. Avellini's got a big rush against him. He gets it away. And Schubert had the defense beaten by a long way. Alex Price put the hit on, and Avellini could not get the ball the distance he needed. Schubert would have been gone. The Saints had a problem last week with a crossing pattern with the two wide receivers just angled across the middle of the field. That's what Schubert was running there. Watch the Bears pass blocking here. 64 is Albrick. The Bears wanted to get uh, a lot of protection on the deep pass, but what surprises me is that Avellini tried to throw as deep as he did with the wind in his face. The punt now by Parson, a fair catch is signal for and made by Mowdy at the 39-yard line of Chicago. And so with 3.54 left to play in the first quarter, New Orleans gets good field position to go first and 10. The Saints will come out first and 10 of the 39-yard line of Chicago with the Bears in the lead, 7-0. Panasonic invites you to take a picture of a voice with a Panasonic cassette tape recorder. Things was a lot different than it is now. All with built-in mics. Some with built-in radios. There are pocket models. It should last another 50 years. And even some that record in stereo. Say something. Come on, 
Click something. So take a picture of a voice with Panasonic. Say something. Bark. Sit tight, Pop. I'll pump myself. Let me tell you something, gang. Any gas gets you where you want to go. But it ought to be in there cleaning your carburetor, too. Now, you want to make sure you're getting the job done, use new STP gas treatment. You just pump in a can with every tank load of gas, and it goes to work cleaning like a bandit. Clean that carburetor. Get a hold of this, and do it yourself. Keep the change, partner. Tomorrow night is Elvis night, as CBS invites you to see and hear Elvis in concert. Tomorrow at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. At Cleveland, the Steelers and the Browns hooking up there, and a lot of points going up in the first half. Absolutely right, Don. Normally, a, a team that comes from a Monday night game will lose on Sunday when they play a club like Pittsburgh, but right now, the Browns are hanging on. Bradshaw just threw a 66-yard touchdown pass to tie it for Pittsburgh. Manning throws on the run. Open is Galbraith. And he has a first down and a 12-yard advance down to the 28-yard line of the Chicago Bears. Wayman Bryant got Tony Galbraith, who's got the good hands, went up in the air to get it. This is one of Coach Hank Stram's favorite patterns. He calls it moving pocket, swinging out a little bit, getting outside, and flips it to uh, Galbraith. Finds a lot of room. A lot of backs in the league can go up in the air after the ball. Not too many come down with it. Galbraith with a big play now, and the Saints march on, failing 7-0. Now they go to the run, and Muncy has stood up and knocked back and driven down. Billy Newsom, the big guy from Grambling. An ex-New Orleans Saint figured in one of the most prominent trades in recent years in the NFL. You'll recall that Newsom was with the Baltimore Colts, was traded to New Orleans for the Saints' number one draft choice, which Baltimore turned into Burt Jones. A very good move by Baltimore thus far. Uh, Billy Newsom has traveled a bit up to the New York Jets, or Saint, uh, New Orleans, rather. Jets, Buffalo, now sh Chicago. Second down and 12. Manning, timing pattern, puts it up over the middle. Don Herman has the football inside the 15-yard line. And again, the Saints come up with a big play on the right arm of Archie Manning, a perfect timing throw. The veteran wide receiver, Don Herman, Alan Ellis was covering, but it's a gain of about 16 yards and a first down. Don, this kind of pattern puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Manning starts the roll. Manning has the ability to run the football. They don't know what he's going to do. He has a receiver coming in on an angle, finds him. Big game. The Saints are now mounting a challenge. We have 2.14 left to play in the first quarter. Chicago leads 7-0. Pitch back, Chuck Muncie. And Muncie is knocked down at about the 15, a loss of a couple of yards. It'll be second down and 12. It looks as though New Orleans thinks that they can get outside on Chicago with their quick pitches. This is about the third time in this ballgame that they've used it, but thus far the Bears have stood tall, and uh, they have not permitted Muncie to get outside with his quick pitches. Muncie is 6'3", 220 pounds, number one draft choice of the Saints a year ago. Average 4.4 yards a carry. Manning on a quarterback draw, calls his own number and takes it down inside the 10 and down to the 8. On second and... Just over 11, Archie Manning on a quarterback draw. Brings That's it down, and now the Saints will have a third down coming up. About five. This kind of move by the quarterback, Archie Manning, can give a defense headache because every time he moves back, they expect pass, but they know that Archie Manning can run the football and run it well. Montgomery and Morrison, the tackles for the Saints. Schumacher and Zanders, the guard. John Hill is down over the ball at center. Third and five, Manning takes a look. He's looking at Herman. Now he's going to run it himself, and Archie Manning takes it in for a touchdown for New Orleans. And the Saints moving the ball very nicely, looking like they did in the preseason. And right back through the Chicago Bear defense and now put up six points, and Zaro is out to try to tie the game. A busted play. Chicago covered well into the secondary. The good legs of Archie Manning couldn't use his arm, so off we go. And the pot of gold, six pounds. Archie Manning is now in his seventh year. He came out, of course, in the year of the quarterback, the year that Plunkett went to New England, Pastorini to Houston, and Manning to New Orleans. Zaro hits the extra point. It is up and good. That was the year Paul Brown drafted a guy in the third round and said, I got the best one of all. Turned out to be Ken Anderson. Right now, with 50 seconds left to play in the first quarter here at Soldier Field in Chicago, the Saints and the Bears are in a tied-up game 7-7.
when life's grind gets to you. Mustang, an exciting way to get from where you are to where you want to be with four on the floor and rack and pinion steering. Mustang. The 78 Ford Mustang II T-Roof Convertible. Go Mustang. So beat the grind. Go Mustang. A better idea from Ford. Homeward Bound, coast of New England. <laughs> The Navy. See your recruiter or call toll free. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. The Chicago Honey Bears on the sideline as the Bears and the Saints are now tied up 7 7. New Orleans taking it downfield. Manning running in for the touchdown. How is he getting so open on those runs? The Bears' pregame strategy, Don, was to get more pressure on Archie Manning when he tried to throw the football because in the offensive line of the Bears have permitted 13 sacks on uh, Archie Manning. So the Bears wanted to get more rush. They got Billy Newsom a good upfield rusher. Both uh, the defensive ends are coming upfield, which leaves the middle completely open. If uh, his quarterback sends the fullback out, pulling him out to the flat, gives him the entire middle. Which is why we saw the fake pass quarterback keeper and then the touchdown score. And now the kickoff by Zaro, as you see, goes in for a touchback. So Chicago again comes out first and 10 on their 20. We have 44 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Tampa Bay and Dallas, 10 nothing in the first quarter. Philadelphia Eagle coaches said Tampa Bay has the best defense they've seen this year through the preseason and the first two weeks of regular season, but didn't too much offense there. On the run by Roland Harper out to the 25-yard line, Derlin Moore is on the stop for New Orleans. A pickup of five. It'll be second and five. Derlin Moore is playing very well this year. Uh, hopefully he can keep into good form because right now they need him. Chicago's coaches said they could be blitzing a lot today because they've not been happy with the pass rush. Manning is throwing them off with those counters. The quarterback draws. Tied up game 7-7 late in the first quarter. Avellini ready to put it up. Pitches back. Here comes Payton. And Walter Payton was upended by Cassidy, the left side cornerback who came up to force the run. He's the son of the former Ohio State great Heisman Trophy winner Hopalong Cassidy. And now the gun sounds. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. The Chicago Bears 7, the New Orleans Saints 7. Should have bought Mobile One. The oil it saves you gas, you know. Should have bought Mobile One. Helps you start at 35 below. Should have bought Mobile One. Engine temperature hits 500. You're cool. Should have bought Mobile One. You only change it every 15,000 miles. Mobile One, the oil that does it all. Take it from an expert. It's good. And it's halftime here at the state. This fall, take a few minutes between halves and build up your lawn with some Scott's Turf Builder. Right now is the best time of year to get a thicker bluegrass lawn by growing more grass plants. Turf Builder will make any active lawn greener now and green up faster next spring. We're all set for the kickoff now. Just a few minutes this weekend. You'll see the difference now and next spring, too. I don't go with Mary Willen. What are you doing? You're not Granada. Granada? This is my Mercedes. Who tied tin cans to my Cadillac? Cadillac? That's the Granada. Alone at last, beloved. Beloved? Where's my bride? You got that Mercedes with another man. Another man? The new Ford Granada. One way to tell it from Cadillac or Mercedes is its sticker price. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. That's the best that Chicago Bears had in a long time. <laughs> Bonamis up from New Orleans. Third down and three now for the Bears at their 28. Avellini's got time, and Harper loses the ball, almost had it. Avellini had time to pitch, and now he got a couple of combatants out there as they're separated. Albrecht exchanging some words with Alois Grooms. 
But the Bears come up short on a third down try. Evelini had time and Harper was open, could not make the connection. And now Bob Parsons will punt the ball for Chicago. He'll have the wind at his back as Rich Mowdy, the rookie from Penn State, is back deep for New Orleans, standing at his 23. High kick. Coverage comes down. Mowdy is taken down as the Bears execute very nicely on special teams coverage. Johnny Musso, number 22, was the man who was down to hit him. We have a 7-7 game in the first minute of the second quarter here at Soldier Field in Chicago. Don Quickie with Emerson Boozer. The New Orleans Saints, after falling behind 7-0, then took it back down the field, got good field position following a bare punt. Ran it in with their quarterback, Archie Manning, coming up with two key runs, including the payoff one, taking it in for the touchdown. Herman goes wide to the left. Mowdy is wide to the right. Manning gives off. Second back through is Muncie. He's a full load as Muncie comes out from the 28-yard line and gets it out to the 35. Got seven. Newsom and Osborne tackled him. Here's something, uh, Don, that you can't teach a running back. The hole was not designed to go that wide, but it was shut down. As you can see, the right side of the line moving over. He finds daylight and just runs into a nice spot for a good game. Second down, three yards to go. Seven-yard pickup. Very good blocking in the Saint offensive front. Quick drive they go to Tony Galbraith, who brings the ball out across his 35 and gets it out close to the 37-yard line. It'll bring up third and short yardage as Newsom and the middle linebacker Don Reeves were on the stop for the Bears. Galbraith came in the second round last year after Muncie was taken in the first round. Two big backs, thunder and lightning. The Saints have got to get their running game going to establish their offense, allow Manning the chance to throw. They line up tight, third and less than a yard. Galbraith is a leaper. Whoop, he left early. Nicely done by Manning, who Archie Manning, see that? Didn't go for the snap count until he saw Galbraith get in position, and he was set in a three-point stance. That's, that's perfectly legal, but it's awfully close. You start that movement. Now, what should have happened, the linebacker should have kept coming. Don Reeves should have kept coming. Then he could have drawn that down the file. It'll be close enough to measure. Looks like it might be a little short. No, it is. It is. Wait a minute now. you got to stretch that thing out. Oh, man. Inch and a half. Did you accept two inches? So the Saints are. They're going to go for it. Saints are going to keep their offense in. <laughs> Henry Stram resplendent in a white raincoat. <laughs> Waves his computer sheet. Get after him. Watch those bare linebackers now fill the gaps as they're going to look for that goal line play. Galbraith, the leaper, goes over the top. And he gets the ball. He had to get it out across the 38-yard line to the 39. Don, that's one of the toughest Got decisions it. to make in pro football for any, any coach, be it the head coach that makes the call or one of the coordinators. When you're, you're backed up and you opt to go for the necessary yardage, be it one inch or a third of an inch, you miss it. And it's a bad call. But this time they were able to pick it up to keep the drive alive. You miss it. It's a real bad call. And it's fourth down inside your own 35-yard line. Now the Bears fill and knock down Chuck Muncie. Chicago had the linebackers shooting the gaps. Coming hard was Don Reeves, the middle linebacker. Osborne, a defensive tackle, also was on the play. And veteran Doug Buffone was coming. The blitz is what the Bears want to do most today. But on running plays, a blitz can get you into trouble. As you come in the door, the running back will go out the door. So it's going to be second down and 12 now for New Orleans after a loss of two yards. Mowdy to the left and Herman is wide to the right. Manny. Timing pattern. Don Herman cut the ball out of bounds. Alan Ellis was covering. 
And that will bring up third down and 12 now. Let's see what the Bears do if they shoot those linebackers in an obvious passing down. Good execution here, but unfortunately, the ball was thrown out of bounds. Don Herman had to go outside to make the reception. Good play faking by Archie Manning. He looked to his left, moved to his right, and went up top downfield. So at the game tied 7-7, 12.09 to play in the first half here at Soldier Field in Chicago. Temperature in the low 50s. New Orleans goes. Archie Manning gets time. Man is open. It's a first down to the rookie, Rich Mowdy. He's got the ball down to the 42-yard line. As the New Orleans Saints come up with a tight, tight blocking for Archie Manning, and if you give him time, he will get it there. Again, notice that uh, the, the Bears are getting the rush from the outside. They bring the middle linebacker, which gives Manning a clear view downfield. He wants everything right in front, so the pattern that's been called to work his receivers across the middle, and he finds it. On right third now, and 12, he delivers for a 22-yard gain to Mowdy. And so now the Saints are in Chicago Bears territory, down at the Bear 42. Second back is Muncie. Penalty marker goes down as Muncie has run out of bounds inside the Bear 40-yard line. Buffon, the left side linebacker, was on the play for Chicago. Chuck Foreman has just run three yards for a Minnesota touchdown. But the extra point was blocked, and so the Vikings lead Green Bay 13 to 7 in the second quarter. Right now, this NFC Central Division is a four-way tie for first or last. However you look at it, they're all one and one. The Bears' schedule toughens up considerably following this game. They'll be playing the Los Angeles Rams in a Monday night game. Following that, they go against the Minnesota Vikings, and New Orleans goes back to New Orleans next week. Illegal use of hands. Number 86 offense, first time. Play San Diego, New Orleans next week, and then they go against the Rams. So far, Archie Manning has thrown the ball four times for the Saints, has completed three for 50 yards. But that big penalty against the Saints makes it first and 20 at their 48. Go to the draw. Here comes Galbraith. Not done yet. Galbraith got back both to the penalty yardage. Got a hit for about nine yards. Fensick and Rydalch were on the stop for the Bears. Chicago Bears have two former Ivy League captains on their team. Fensick was a captain of Yale. Dan Jiggetts, a backup offensive lineman, was a captain at Harvard. The Yale wants to have their picture in the upcoming program as the Colts lead the Bills 7-0. The Yale-Harvard game, so they want to get a picture of them. And Jiggetts and Fensick are going to have their... Picture's taken in a tuxedo. It's fitting the Ivy League. This one. Here comes Manning. He's got a big problem. Manning throws on the run, and the play is broken up, and a penalty marker goes down. Mowdy turning in again, and apparently Virgil Livers fouled Mowdy. It's an automatic first down to the point of infraction. Defensive pass interference, number 24, first down. So the Saints get a big play now on the penalty as Jack Pardee, who says this is the day if we are a good football team, we should start playing like it. Three weeks into the regular season. The Saints and the Bears are locked up in a 7-7 tie right now. We have 10.36 to play in the first half. Manning with a first and 10 for the Saints at the Bear 30. Galbraith running hard, still driving, gets ahead for four, down to the 26-yard line. Fensick, who had 17 tackles against the Cardinals last week, comes up to make the stop. That tells an awful lot if Fensick has to make 17 tackles. Somebody in that line and linebacking core is not doing the job as it should be done. There, when you're free safe, he's making 17 tackles. <laughs> Second down and six now as the Saints playing into the wind. Manning goes to Muncie and he is down to the 25 yard line. Bears cut it down quickly, a gain of only a yard. Osborne was on the stop. Now New England has gone out in front 20 to 14 over the Jets. Don rather reminds me of a story up in Buffalo once. 
O.J. had reversed his field, gained about 25 yards for the touchdown. That run by Roscoe Word, a former cornerback of the Jets. The question was, at the conclusion of the game, Roscoe, how did O.J. beat you? Roscoe said, that is not the question. How did he get by 10 other guys before he got to me? <laughs> third down and five now for New Orleans. Saints are four for seven, converting third downs. There goes Manning. He's going to get it. Archie Manning's not done yet. Inside the 20, inside the 15, and down to the 10-yard line. Archie Manning runs it ahead for 15 yards and a first down. He's the leading rusher in the game far and away. This is exactly what I meant when I said you get the rush up field and sometimes bring your linebacker. That leaves either your running back or your quarterback an escape hatch. Manning finds it, gets the necessary yardage, and then shuffles and shakes and bullets his way for additional yardage. So now the Saints are challenging to go ahead of this 7-7 lockup as you see Manning finally thrown down. Back to live action now. First and 10 just outside the 10. Manning throws looking for Mowdy who protests he was held up by Livers but it goes as an incomplete pass. It'll be second and 10. It looked as though it might have been a hook pattern. Uh, Mowdy didn't turn around even though he complained but uh, the way the ball was thrown Manning thought that he'd turn in a hook pattern there. That stops the clock. We have eight minutes and 27 seconds left to play in the first half here at Chicago. Bears scored first in a 33-yard pass play from Bob Avellini to Walter Payton. Saints came back on a run by Archie Manning from in close. Manning play faking. He's got time again. Puts it up. Got his tight end. And Faxton flashes down close to the two-yard line, down close to the one. That'll bring up third down if he did not get the first down and less than a foot for a first down. And about a yard for touchdown. It's going to be close for the first down yardage. It is the kind of situation that not any offensive unit would love to be in, needing only maybe an inch or two or, or half foot to get the needed first down with four tries at the goal line. Baxton, a big tight end, caught a lot of balls in the preseason, and he fights his way down. Third down and about a foot for the first down. Third down and just over a yard for the touchdown. Let's see if they go back over to Galbraith. Manning calls his own number and Archie Manning's going to score his second touchdown of the game. So Manning play faking to his fullbacks and then rolling out and taking it in from a yard out. And the Bear fans don't like what they see among their defensive players. They are beginning to boo. Manning here calls his own play. And it's getting rather risky to see a quarterback move around like that, but certainly it has worked this far, but you don't want to see a valuable player like Manning do that. A big, big block by number 79, Emmanuel Zanders, who you saw kick out on the outside linebacker, Doug Buffone. That gave Manning the room for the touchdown. That was the touchdown block. Extra point by Zaro is delivered up and good, and so all of a sudden, after the Bears opened up an early seven-point lead, looked like they might be putting the Saints to rout. New Orleans rallies back with two touchdowns by their quarterback, Manning, to take the lead. America, you've been changing. Coming, going, changing, growing. The things that make up life. Why is Bank America becoming Visa? To keep up with you. You're traveling, you're moving, you're taking lots of life. Today, you need money that's good around the corner, all across America, and in 117 countries around the world. That's why Bank America is becoming Visa, the most widely recognized card in the world. Visa, we're keeping up with you. Badly needed oil lies deep beneath the oceans much of it beyond man's reach until now with this unique drilling ship the people of phillips petroleum can drill in waters more than a mile deep the deepest water man has ever drilled in for oil probing deep beneath the sea to bring you fine products for your car that's performance from phillips petroleum a performance company New Orleans Bonanese have something to dance about here as the Saints, you see, their best drive of the season so far. 72 yards and 14 plays, using up over seven minutes of the clock. That is what they have not had in the first two games of all control offense. Zaro squibs it downfield. It's going to pick up. Oh, a mistake is made by Walter Shy. That ball would have gone out of bounds, and 
Saints would have had a kickoff from their 30. But Len Walterscheid picked it up on the two hop and then couldn't hold himself and stepped out of bounds. So the Bears again go on offense from just outside their 20. Bradshaw has just thrown to Lynn Swan for a second touchdown combination between those two as the Steelers have gone in front of the Browns 21 to 14. Bradshaw has thrown for three touchdowns in that game two to Swan one to Frank Lewis. 7.30 to play in the first half here at Chicago. Soldier Field is sold out. Wind is gusting in off Lake Michigan. Temperature in the low 50s. Chicago trails New Orleans 14 to 7. Avellini in the flat goes to Walter Payton. He's a tough guy. Look at Walter Payton. He almost took it a long, long way had he not gotten by. Bob Pollard finally ran him down and Myers came over. If he Payton had eluded them, he'd have gone a long way. Nothing left to get him. You want to get Walter Payton on one of the linebackers, and this time he, he got Greg Westbrook, put a little move on him, and headed upfield. This is almost a cardinal sin. So the Bears get the gainer out to their 32 yard line. They now have the ball first and 10 there. Avellini to Payton, and this time Walter Payton has cut down the middle linebacker, Fetterspiel, filling very nicely. Derlin Moore was also on the play for New Orleans. The gain is out to the 35 yard line. Pickup of three, it'll be second down and seven. You see the Saints defensive huddle. New Orleans leading the game 14 to seven in the second quarter. Saints coming off two four point losses in their opening two games of the season against Green Bay and last week against Detroit after a five and one preseason the best in the franchise history. Avellini has time puts it up penalty markers down might have a hold against Chicago. The connection is made to Roland Harper all the way ahead to the 48 yard line. But the play is going to come back as we might have a hold against the Bears. And that is the signal from referee Gordon McCarter. We've seen a number of penalties in crucial situations, especially like the last one. They, they had gotten the needed yardage that they wanted for the first down, but then come up with a bit with a breakdown. Both clubs have had crucial breakdowns when they didn't need them. See who did it. Holding number 65 offense second down Noah Jackson. It's only holding if you get caught, right? <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> a lot of holding a dozen. Bob Pollard grabs on early as the Chicago Bears are starting to hear some boos now here at Soldier Field. Peyton was thrown down. This is sheer quickness. The ball was designed to go off to the right of the New Orleans offensive line. He was blocked down inside, which you don't want to do, and he finds the ball carrier. So we have third down and about 16 yards to go for the first down for the Chicago Bears. New Orleans leads 14-7. Here comes the rush on Avellini. A timing pattern. The man is open. The ball is dropped. James Scott. He's dropped two. Hank Stram says something to him. Come along the line. Nice going. Scott had to wait on the football. It's a bit underthrown. And with the speed of Scott having to slow down like that, put the brakes on in a hurry, it can be a very difficult reception to make. So now the New Orleans defense again forces Chicago to punt. As Parsons, the big punter from Penn State, drops back. That's a good snap. And drills it well downfield. Here comes Mowdy. Schubert is down. Doesn't quite get to him. Mowdy's got some room. And Mowdy is out across the 35-yard line to the 36. And there New Orleans goes on offense first and 10 as Art Best, number 25. Former Notre Dame running back. Finished up at Kent State. Drafted by the Rams. And came to Chicago. Was down on special teams to make the play. And apparently there's a penalty marker down all the way back at the line of scrimmage. Honey Bears keeping warm. Might have been a bear downfield early. Legal man downfield on the punt coverage. It's coming back at any rate with 5.21 to play in the first half. New Orleans 14, Chicago 7. In 
ineligible downfield. Number 25 kickers. Repeat fourth down. So Art Best, who was down to make the play on special teams, left early. So he got there. Air fans were looking for a big season, still are. Right now, Chicago having trouble moving the football against New Orleans. Field position has been very important in this game. The first two touchdowns came after punts. Will result in good field position for the offenses. Bear scored, 33-yard pass play, then New Orleans came right back with Manning running it in. Manning scored again from a yard out. Now Parsons hits it deep. Here's Mowdy. Turning the corner. And Mowdy's finally run out of bounds at the 29, so the ultimately the Saints were better off with the first punt. They wanted that second shot at it. This time Best is down again to make the play on special teams and New Orleans goes back on offense with a seven point lead. Your car will always need new parts, but you will never need to buy another battery once you own the J.C. Penney battery. It never needs water, ever, and it has more power to start your car than any other car battery. So dependable, it's fully warranted for as long as you own your car. If it ever fails, return it. We'll replace it free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or Catalog Desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. You know why Zenith developed Color Century? Well, did you ever see my face and it looks too red? And other times it's all washed out. That's why. Zenith Color Century. Think of it as a TV control room in your set. It controls the color picture, corrects the color picture automatically. 30 times a second. And that makes a difference. After all, I don't play for the Cincinnati Pinks. See the difference Color Sentry makes. Only from Zenith. Sunday, Rhoda's mother, Nancy Walker, returns. Ma, you are incredible. I know. Sunday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Back at Soldier Field in Chicago, we have 5.08 to play in the first half. The New Orleans Saints lead the Bears 14 0, and now the Saints going offense first and 10. The ball at their 29. Manning to Muncie. Stood up and driven back by Buffon. Doug Buffon, in his 11th year from Louisville, the defensive captain of the Chicago Bears, drives back Chuck Muncie for a loss of a yard. A defensive play played very well by Doug Buffon. A well-experienced player, been around the league, knows what he's doing. Warts off the blocker and finds Muncie and bear hugs all the way. Two big people in a head-on collision. Now the Saints go with a straight tee backfield. One wide receiver in motion goes Herman. Quick draw. Muncie runs. And once he hits out across the 30-yard line, a gain of about three yards on the play. It'll be third and long now for New Orleans. Fensick, strong safety, number 45, came up to make the hit. Muncie needs, I think, a new shirt here. Some teams prefer to use the tearaway jerseys when they feel that there's a, they have a strong back, a deep red back. They want his shirt to come off anytime uh, one is grabbed. Manning has 31 yards and two touchdowns on four carries. Muncie 17 yards and 11 carries. Galbraith 34 yards. Down the field, ooh, the free football. Manning, who's got a fastball arm, coming off that shoulder surgery, had the money, the ball right there on the numbers into the win. But Allen Ellis, covering very nicely, shook it loose from Don Herman. And now the Saints will have to punt the ball back into the wind of the Chicago Bears. The Bears can come out of this with good field position with 3.44 to play in the first half. And New Orleans leading the game 14 to 7. Tom Blanchard hits it very nicely into the win. A tremendous punt. It drives Schubert back inside his 25. But now he's got a channel of blockers and Schubert rips it out to the 36-yard line. And there with three and a half to go in the first half. The Bears go on offense first and ten looking to sustain a drive. As New Orleans defense has been closing down the Chicago Bears in offense. 